Welcome to Courtside Moms. I'm your host, Wendy Sparks. Today, my guest is Melissa Pritchard, mother of Peyton Pritchard of the Boston Celtics. We have so much to catch up on. So sit back and let's bring Melissa on the show. Welcome, Melissa, to Courtside Moms. I am so blessed to have this opportunity to spend some time with you to learn about Peyton. Well, thank you so much for having me. And I'm, I'm thrilled that you invited me to, to talk. And, you know, I'm just excited to get going. Absolutely. <laughs> so give us the background story about Peyton as a child and then go into how he started to play basketball. Yeah, well, um, so the reason Peyton was always pretty active um, ever since he was two, um, we have a pretty athletic family. My sister played college basketball. My husband played football at Oklahoma and I was a gymnast. And so um, sports was just part of our life. And actually my thesis statement when I was doing my senior paper was um, I was going to be a physical therapist, sports trainer. And so I was really interested in starting some kind of a program. And um, so basically, you know, when Peyton was, I want to say three or four, we had moved to a new town and um, we wanted to sign them up for uh, soccer. And so um, basically, I think none of us had ever played soccer. So my husband read a book and, you know, had this team of kids and then they liked doing the agility stuff that we were doing. And so then we started doing cone drills for basketball and that soccer team became our basketball team. And from there, you know, and that was at like five. So Peyton was playing like mini hoopers and then up two grades and that team like literally just stayed together and we ended up having more and more teams. But I would say Peyton became really interested in basketball at, the age of five where he was one of those ones that liked to do drills over and over. He's a perfectionist. And so he likes repetition. And at that young age, it's pretty unique. Um, but, you know, we had the background because we were all college athletes and mm -hmm. understood the fundamental side. And so he was just, um, and we were lucky enough that he was interested enough to do those types of thing at that young of age. Yeah. You know, so that's really when he got started was at five, but he's, a, he was a multi-sport athlete all the way through his sophomore year in high school. So when did he start playing competitively? So he started playing competitive, like AAU basketball in second grade. Right. Um, he played for the local team in Portland, which was called inner city players, ICP. Um, and so, um, that was when he was seven. And I think he played like on the eight or nine year old team. They didn't really, I mean, it was very cute. I, if I had pictures to show, it was so funny because the little kids, um, they got the leftover uniforms and they would usually be the ones that were like five sizes too big and they would roll them up and they looked like he was wearing sweatpants that were rolled and you'd have to pull them up as he's dribbling down the court. I mean, it was super cute, but that's when he started um, club basketball. Amazing. You see those little boys little, <laughs> with the little, little knots on the side of their shirts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what he looked like. Yeah. And you just keep pulling him up and, you know, it's so cute. But yeah, he wanted to play like um, Peyton played. Um, so we had, he played for ICP for two years. And then um, though that soccer team we had, we were continuing to do skills training. And I say we, I was a gymnast. So I did the administrative side of everything. And Terry did the coaching and that, those kit that group ended up growing to like 200, 300 kids. And he was doing weekly skills clinics, like, uh, four or five days a week. And so we started having teams. So eventually Peyton left ICP and we, um, started our own club program. And, and so he just continued to play under ours. Wow. Does that program still exist today? It doesn't because we just moved out here. And my sister, who also was the one that played at Arizona, she moved two houses down. And yeah. so we, I wouldn't be surprised because she has a seven-year-old and a two-year-old that we probably will start it again. They're just <laughs> getting going. It's like deja vu again, you know, with the two boys. And so I assume that, you know, she's chomping at the bit. And I think Terry's, uh, he's, he's interested in it, but he's also appreciative of the break, you know, of, yeah. because that's been our whole life. And so it's now like we're just sitting in the sit back and to kind of enjoy, you know, watching all our kids do their thing. But um, I imagine it's always hard when you know how to do certain things to let somebody else do it. Yeah. And so 
you know, that's one of those things where, you know, I can tell my sisters like, are you ready? And, you know, so we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see what the future holds for that program. So <laughs> let's talk about um, Peyton's high school years at West Lynn, where he won four consecutive uh, state championships and many awards. So talk to me about that time. So um, Peyton, um, we moved to West Lynn when he was in sixth grade. And so we started, he started working with that high school coach um, because we were doing basketball camps in Spain. And so the high school coach would travel with us to Spain. So he started to get to know them and play um, in sixth, seventh and eighth grade in their summer league with the high school team. And so um, we picked West Lynn because of the community and um, we were in private school before. And so we had um, wanted to move over to a a better sports community that had a good education. And so, you know, it really started in junior highs when he developed that relationship with um, Coach V. And, um, you know, so coming in, he was prepared as a freshman. Um, You know, he wanted to make varsity. um, And then, of course, he wanted to start. And, you know, it's always like there's always a next challenge for Peyton. And so it's always kind of managing that you know, being so young and, and small. And so, you know, but, um, yeah, it, you know, Eric's a great coach. Um, and he allowed Peyton to like earn his way, which I really like. And, um, the, the team to trust him and to, you know, cause that's, you know, most of those kids are juniors and seniors that are starting and playing a lot. And, and you've got this 14 year old that's chomping at the bit to, you know, get out there and, you know, managing Peyton's expectations, expectations. There were a few tears at times where we were like, you probably need to go out to the car before people see you start crying because you're (laughs) frustrated, you know, because he's such a competitor. And so, um, but, you know, I couldn't speak highly enough, the experience at Westland with the parents and the type of program that Eric has run. Um, Most of Peyton's teammates had have division one scholarships, either in football, basketball, or baseball. Mm-hmm. So it's really unique. Um, it's a unique thing, I think, that just the amount of talent that has come out of there and and um, and just wonderful kids. But um, Pey- Peyton had, I mean, I'm trying to think. His freshman year was his hardest year because Lake Oswego was um, ranked in the top five in the nation. They had mm-hmm. a bunch of kids that also went Division One, And we ended up beating them. They beat us twice during the year. And then um, we beat them at state, which was so shocking. Um, But, you know, I always think it's hard to beat a team three times. So, you know, we were going to get them, I thought, once. But, um, you know, uh, that was probably our most challenging year. And then I think from there, Peyton kind of figured it out and knew what he needed to do. And, and, you know, as kids, you know, those younger kids would come up, which were actually his classmates they kind of got on board and were hungry for that. And, you know, Peyton's one that would go in the morning. He usually shot three to five times a week at six. And then he would come home and have breakfast. And then he would um, go back in the afternoon um, and then like usually do some track drills. He always had a ball with him. So Peyton was one of those kids that would run around a track dribbling when I was, when he was little, I'd be riding my bike and he would be dribbling in the rain, you know, and his hands would be black. And it's just like, he just is one of those kids that's always had a ball in his hand. And yeah. it just seemed like the kids around um, just saw that and wanted to be a part. And so, you know, they were interested in, in training and the repetition and they bought in. And, and I really think the culture is what made that um, program. And that really came from Eric, you know, uh, allowing Peyton to be in the gym as much as he did, because he had to come open it up and, you know, embracing that, but, um, you know, and he rewarded that with all the kids there. So I think they, people earned their time and they, you know, I don't think there's one person that would say they didn't thoroughly enjoy their high school experience there. Oh, that's amazing. And I mean, like I was saying before, he won four consecutive uh, state championships. I mean, so his high school years must've been fantastic which also led him eventually to be play, to play for the FIBA three by three Mm-hmm. Um, U eighteen World Championship, and then the U nineteen World Cup in Egypt. What was that like for you when you're sitting there watching your son, whether you were with him or whether you're watching on TV? Now, now he's representing the U.S. It's different now. You know, I mean, he went from West Lynn, and now he's representing the U.S. I mean, he's being selected as one. Of, you know what I mean? Like, it's just to yeah. me, I, 
I look at our sons and I'm like, wow, there's so many kids yeah. in the world. And here you have the FIBA three on three or three by three. And there's only a certain amount of players that are selected to play. And this, they selected your son. So what was that for you? You know, I mean, we actually were there. So we went to Debrecen Hungary and watched. Um, and uh, it was so thrilling. So, I mean, just to watch, I was an international gymnast. And so to get, watch Peyton compete for his country um, was, you know, just amazing. And to see the, the different countries all come together, because Peyton actually went to Colorado Springs first, and we weren't with him there. And he, he, Peyton's a big, you know, card player. So he likes to play games at night. And he got to know a lot of the kids from the other countries, and they would play cards. And, and he just really, really enjoyed it. But you know, I think the the cool thing is my parents actually made the trip. And um, I don't know if it's still a, a, a record, but Peyton, I think hit like, it, I think the game lasted a minute and a half and he might've hit nine threes and it was over. It was, and we were like court, right front and center. And I remember looking at my dad and he was crying because it was just like a cool <laughs> thing. The whole fans, like, you know, you don't, you very rarely see something like that where it happens, you know, and, um, and so we've been very blessed to be able to travel and see him, um, at almost everything. Um, we didn't go to Egypt. Um, and, but I wish we would have, we did watch all those games, um, on live feed. Um, so, you know, it's just pretty cool that he's gotten to do those things with USA basketball. Um, yeah. So USA basketball has just been, um, a blessing for Peyton. Um, he's made some lifelong friends, but the coaches and the process and, you know, not every time when he tried out, did he get selected? To the finals and then you know it's a it's a pretty grueling process to go through um but when you do get selected it's just um it really is an honor and you get to play with all these different coaches and and go to these different places that you know a normal kid doesn't get to do so yeah. um yeah we feel very and I know Peyton feels very lucky for those experiences because it definitely has built him to who he is and, and how he, you know, takes challenges and, and how he prepares, you know, with those different environments. So it's like, he takes those experiences and he just grows them. Like he just, he feeds them into his next step. Yep. That's amazing. Yeah. So yeah. now let's talk about his college recruitment. So he originally committed to Oklahoma, which is, I believe yours and your husband's alma mater. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. And then he later decommitted. So was that disappointing to, for you? You know, I mean, it was such a whirlwind. Um, Payne had his first offer, I feel like, as it was a freshman, as a freshman. And we had traveled um, prior to actually doing his official visits. We had mm -hmm. hit multiple schools. And, you know, when you went to Oklahoma, Payne grew up a huge Sooner football fan. And so, you know, they just rolled out the red carpet. Like, mm -hmm. it, it was amazing. He was met with coach Stoops, which is the head football coach, Toby Keith, you know, the country singer, which went to high school with my husband. So, you know, like they rolled it out, like it was, and, you know, so he committed, um, on the spot and, um, and of course we were excited because that would be the first time in Oklahoma history where three sport athletes, you know, went to the same school. Right. And so, you know, we were really excited about that. You know, Terry is from Oklahoma. So, to have family and friends there. Um, and so, you know, that, it, and we love coach, um, the head coach, you know, yeah. so he's amazing. And, and he's also Dana Altman's best friend. So, which is Oregon's coach. So, yeah. you know, um, that was, um, kind of a whirlwind. And then really what happened was, um, I can't remember if we had went to Villanova first before that, um, because we visited Villanova a few times. And I remember um, Jay saying, Jay Wright saying to us, you know, we really recruit fairly regionally where kids can get home within three to five hours. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hmm, I, we took, you know, that was a half the year you could get to Philadelphia direct. You can't get to Oklahoma in Norman direct from Oregon. Um, I just kind of like pocketed that information. And I thought about it because I grew up in Oregon and was a gymnast at Oklahoma. And I was so homesick because I couldn't get home. 
at the very beginning. And it was an adjustment. And, you know, my husband grew up in Moore, which was 15 minutes from Norman and got to go home for Sunday dinner. His mom did his laundry, you know, so his experience was very different. He did. So he didn't ever experience that not being able to see my family. And so I think when Peyton started to really think about it, he was like, I want my family to be able to see me play consistently. Um, I want to be able to go home if I, you know, if available. And I feel like what Jay said to us at that moment, probably I was like, that makes sense. You know, and I'm glad that Payne really thought about it. It was really challenging because we made him call Lon and tell him. And, um, um, and so when he called Lon, I, of course, Lon was, upset but mm-hmm. um he also said something that was really kind and you know basically just told him you know if you were going to go anywhere i mean um coach altman is an amazing coach he's my best friend and yeah. you know you'll do well there but i know Payne had nuts in his stomach you know just because he doesn't like to disappoint and that's just yeah. such an uncomfortable conversation but you know i mean when Peyton opened it back up he was really heavily recruited by i would say all of the all the schools um, that, you know, are always contending in, in, in the NCAA tournament. I mean, he, he had a number of offers and we were just trying to help him navigate that, you know, without offering, you know, too much insight, but maybe kind of do like the plus minuses of each. Yeah. Um, I think Peyton was really looking for a role, like what was his role going to be and where did they see him yeah. and who was going to be around him. Um, and I think, you know, that at Oregon, that was something that he was going to be able to fit all of those things and still be close to home. And that, you know, and I just love that you're saying this because that shows the maturity that he had because now he recognizes, you know, I want to take basketball far. So these are things that are important to me in order for me to be successful. Because a lot of kids just, I just want to play. It doesn't matter who recruits them. And they end up on a program or playing for a program that doesn't fit the way they play. They end up sitting on the bench or they play in different positions that benefits the team, but it doesn't necessarily benefit their future. So it's, yeah. to me, in my mind, I'm listening like, wow, it's good that your son at such a young age recognized that, you know what, this is probably a better for me as a, as a basketball player and can carry me forward to what I'm trying to do. I don't know. This is what I'm, I, this is what I'm hearing. And I'm like, I love that. I well, absolutely you know, love that. That it, that is, I mean, Peyton has always been like that, trying to find where he's going to fit or how he can contribute. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I would say, and what I've learned because we actually have three kids that play college basketball. We have Anthony, who's our we're, we're legal guardians. He played at Oregon too, and he's on the G League for the Spurs. And we have Lexi, oh. who's at Santa Clara, playing college basketball. And I, I always joke that if I had three more kids that we'd have perfected this experience because, you know, when you go in and, you know, even though you're prepared, when you go to college, you always, there's always bumps in the road as you go along and you always think you can do more and being able to, when you're picking your school, trusting the process and earning your time. And if you're doing everything right, you will get in the end. I think if you, I always feel like what, that you you go in with like stars in your eyes when you come in as a freshman then your sophomore and junior year you're like a little bit disgruntled at times you know maybe you're not you being utilized the way you think you know there's always this and then by the senior year you're like oh the coach is amazing I love it here it was the best thing ever but you got it like each one of my kids like in the middle were like oh this is tough you know yeah I don't know if they see my value, like all these things, they all said the same thing. I mean, I pretty much could write it down. And then by the end, they're like, it's just fantastic. I'm so glad I did it. I love them. You know, they helped me develop to who I am. And so I'm just like, stay the course, do everything you're supposed to be doing that they're asking, do the extra. It'll all work out. I promise the way it's supposed to. Absolutely. And sometimes as moms, that's where our support comes in because our kids want this instant gratification or they just feel that it should be this way. And they're not understanding that, no, there's a whole process around the reason why you're here and you fit in a specific role. So just open up and just open your eyes and see the whole picture and not just a little bit that you're trying to do. You know what I mean? Because right. then it just mm-hmm. makes it a different experience. Because the worst thing is when your kid is off to college or anywhere and they absolutely hate it. That is just yeah. the worst. Yeah. And no, I wouldn't sure. wish that on anybody. So 
<laughs> so, <laughs> so what was his time like um, in Oregon? And what was that time like for you watching the games? You know, it was amazing. I mean, the University of Oregon has been, was amazing for Peyton. The coaching staff was amazing. Uh, you know, Peyton going to the final four his freshman year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it, it's, he's, Peyton has had a very, I, I don't want to say famed life, but has had so much success mm-hmm. as a high school player, even as a college player. You know, I think it was just, I think he thinks that's normal. Um, it, uh, it was the fans, everything was great. You know, it's always a challenge. The, I think the challenging part is when things aren't going well and you're the parent and we're local and to, you know, you get to hear all of the negative as well as the positive and mm-hmm. that's a challenging thing. But, you know, for us, his experience there overall, I mean, the facilities are amazing support system. I couldn't say enough about, um, the type of experience he, he had. I feel like they're very transparent. Um, the fans, you know, that arena packs out so much fun. It's live and, and, you know, to have Phil Knight's support, um, you know, he's done a lot with that university in all of their sports. So it truly is an amazing place to be and to play. And, um, and I miss those games, you know, um, you, especially because you went from that to a COVID year where you're watching basketball in a, a either a non-filled arena or a half-filled. It wasn't until playoffs that you actually got to see like the energy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it reminded me of like that loudness and the energy that you had at University of Oregon. Um, but yeah, it, it was truly, I mean, amazing. I would say, I don't think, I think Peyton, it, it was really kind of fairy tale. It ended, even though we ended with COVID, you know, and not being able to finish the season, season that he had had um, as a senior um, was, you know, we were yeah. on our, a, a big ride, a wave that was just, you know, yeah, we were happy to be a part of. Absolutely. So in his junior year, he declared originally for the draft and then he decided after to go back for his senior year. So talk to us about that whole process and the initial decision and then what led him to say, you know what, let me just wait. Yeah, well, so, you know, um, I don't think that um, when Peyton declared, I think his intention um, was to get feedback. Um, We have a really, really good agent. Greg Lawrence from Wasserman um, and Josh Jameson at Oregon kind of helped us um, make a plan. And it was, let's dip our toe in the water and get the feedback and see what we need to do, but see where you land um, and then decide what you want to do with that. And I think it was the best thing he ever could have done. He worked out for several teams and they gave him very specific things that he they needed to see improvement on. And, um, it also helped him go through the interviewing process with the teams and, you know, just, just to dial it in if that's the next step that he was going to take. And he took that feedback and maximized it. I was very proud of him. And like it, so for us, I really like that the, that the NCAA and NBA have that option. Um, I don't think that Peyton, you know, of course, if he would have been a first round pick, you know, if that was what they were projecting. He may have stayed. I'm super glad he didn't. Um, he got his degree. He, you know, he got to do an, um, have an amazing senior year and it prepared him for the NBA. So I'm, I, it was kind of like a pre-interview for the interview. And so I, I really, I'm thankful that he got to do that. And I'm glad that they kind of walked him through that together with us. Okay. So just, I, you're teaching me something new here. So he was able to do um, the workouts with the teams and then decide to go back to school. Mm -hmm. See, I didn't know that. I think you have a certain amount of time. I don't know. Like, I feel like it's a date that you can pull back. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he went and worked out. um, I don't remember how many teams, but I want to say they flew him out to five or six teams. Yeah. And so, um, and then I think it was at the deadline and where he had to undeclare. And so, um, yeah. So it was very helpful though, because he got to see like, what are they testing us on? Um, what are the interview questions? How do they like, what are they looking for? Um, and also like, you know, when somebody isn't doing so well, not what are the things not to do? Like, you know, those kinds of things. So, um, you know, I don't, you can't, that, that information is so valuable to experience firsthand. And so, um, but yeah, 
to answer your question, you get to you get to do that. Yeah, so absolutely. Or at least you did. Yeah. See, I don't with my son. This is 2014, not that long ago, but my brain. So <laughs> so for me, I was just thinking once you declare, I knew you had the option to decide to go back to school at a certain point, but I didn't realize that you could also actually go do workouts for teams. I thought once you work out for your teams, so well, now that's it. Like you, you, you've declared and you're, you're staying there. So good to know. <laughs> this is why we do this show, right? Because we yeah. are resources for parents. So thank you for saying that because I know there's parents out there that had no idea or parents who were listening or will be listening whose kids are in the same situation. They're like, okay, because you're right. You do need to test the waters. Sometimes players don't know where they fit and yeah. they're not really sure. So at that time for you guys, where did he fit? Like where, where after he did all those workouts, um, what was the consensus uh, where, where um, you were told he fit that made you decide, you know what, let's just wait another year. Well, so they basically, I think he was offered a guaranteed contract. Um, I can't remember which team, mm-hmm. um, but we knew that he could, it, it's always been a, a thing for me that my kids get their degrees because yeah. there's life after basketball. Mm-hmm. And um, so I, they had basically the agent and, you know, the coaches had said, you know, this is, this is the minimum. And if so, if Payne goes and improves those things, we know he could get this next year too. So why not go back and work on those things and see if you can get yourself higher up. And that really was like, okay, well, you know, if this is the minimum, we're still in the NBA or getting a good shot at it. Um, so why don't we go back for our senior year, get our degree, see if we can improve those things and then elevate our, our, our stock. Basically. I love that. I love that. I love that how you family made that decision together because you have a lot of families that would just say, no, just go, you know yeah. what I mean? Just, just go, just go, whether it be financial reasons or whether just be not, it doesn't matter. We don't trust that. We just want to make sure you're, you're saying that he has a little, a smidgen of a chance now. So let's take that risk. I'm not saying taking risks are not good. I'm just saying that it's good that you recognize that, you know what, the, the, the opportunity or the possibility is going to be there next year. So let's just wait it out and get that degree because you're right. There is life after basketball and he's going to have to do something. He's not going to be right. playing basketball until he's 50. So <laughs> Uh, although you'd probably like to, but I mean, like, yeah, I guess that is yeah. for sure. <laughs> He'd like to, I'm sure. But hey, you know, actually, you know what? Manifest it. You never know what will happen, right? So All right. <laughs> <laughs> he could be the first. So his senior comes around and he declares. So at that time, did you now, mom, really see him as a professional basketball player in the NBA? You know, um, I like when you say manifest, I, at a, when the kids were super young, I, I'm just like a strong believer in like putting out in the world what you want for them and, and having them also put their goals out there and speaking them out loud. And he had had such a good year. He'd made that progress. I've always believed that Peyton was good enough to play in the NBA. I knew it would be the, have to be the right kind of team. You know, he's, he's a smaller guard um, and he, you know, so it had to be the right fit, but I do, I just believed because I've seen him in enough games that he, um, could compete and help a team. And so, you know, that's really it. I was expecting, I didn't know where, I didn't know where he would be drafted. I was just praying that he would get drafted, um, because that's his goal. Um, and you know, and then it was just, all right, let's do everything we can to prepare for that. And for, you know, your, they actually, it, with COVID, the teams flew in to see, I think is how it went. Um, there was like a lot of limitations or they did video kind of, it was something like, it was very different than I'm sure yeah. how a normal draft process. I don't even think they had a combine or if they did, he didn't need to go to, it, it was just so like, it was such a long, cause they kept pushing it back and it was yeah. just different than it was in the past. So, you know, I think the hardest part of it in the senior year was just the waiting. Yeah. You know, that was the challenge and trying to keep yourself focused and, and prepared, um, secrets, you know, you know, I guess secretly I was not the waiting part, but the fact that I had all my kids under one roof for like five months was, you know, I hadn't had them there in, I think since they were like 12, because summer for us, you know, traveling with all the sports and it's kind of divide and conquer between my husband and I. And so, 
you know, we, we never really had everybody where we couldn't go anywhere. And, you know, we're, we like to play games as a family and spend time like, and just to get to see them like that was truly a blessing. Um, I don't think Payne would say he, I think he enjoyed that because he's a homebody, but he also was ready to get going. And so, you know, that part, the anxiety of it was tough, but you know, it all worked out. Of course, because the wait was way longer. Yeah. If I, yeah. <laughs> and yes, they did have a combine, but it was virtual. Um, so I guess not every player needed had to, to do go. it or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But so, yeah, now let's talk about draft night. Take us to your family's draft night from beginning to end. Where did you watch it? Um, who are you with? Like, what was that vibe like for you? So we watched it at our house. Um, they had to set up all the cameras like in our living room and kind of were rearranging things. And it was just our immediate family and um, one of the Oregon coaches. And then um, I think a few friends we had, you, there were a certain amount of limitations that you could have yeah. of amount of people in your home. But um, we watched it at our house and, you know, it was, I have to say probably one of the most stressful things that I've ever been through. Um, you know, like just the anxiety of, you know, watching, like being excited for the kids that you knew that were getting drafted, but seeing where Peyton was going to land, you know, so I felt like I've never, I don't remember even as a competitive gymnast having those kind of like butterflies of nerves, yeah. like just cause you know, you just, you always worry as a mother, like everything's going to, be the way land where it's supposed to be and you know it's all going to work out but watching you know everybody's stress in their face go through that process as you're waiting for your name to be called um was was very very I, I don't even know I, I it's kind of a whirlwind I can't even explain it because like mm -hmm. I felt like I was like watching my body from like outer space oh yeah you know and then when he was called, it was like so much joy and, you know, like for, just to have everybody who, you know, was a part of the journey there supporting him and cheering him on and, and he couldn't have landed with a better organization. And so for us, you know, it just, it worked out perfectly. And, you know, it's still one of those, like, it, it's probably one of the best memories that we'll ever have as a family. For sure. So Peyton talks about his emotions on being drafted after he had many ups and downs in high school and college and how grateful he was to have been selected to the Boston Celtics, who he didn't think was actually going to choose him. So what was that moment like for you as you were watching his reaction to being finally named to an NBA roster? You know, I mean, it was, we were shocked because like, like he said, he Celtics didn't even really talk to him. Like yeah. you go through and you talk, you inter. I think you interview with, um, I can't remember if they like draw certain teams that you are like have interview. And then like, there's like, there's these different phases. And so I remember Peyton was on a ton of interviews yeah. and, um, some had like follow-up interviews and some teams were texting, you know? And so you, we kind of thought he was going to land one place. And so when that one didn't, go and then the next one was like the Celtics or something right after that we didn't even think the Celtics were looking at me mm -hmm. and like we really had no clue and so um but we were so we when we when they did call his name we were thrilled because um at the time the head coach of the Celtics was um when Peyton was recruited in college he was at Butler and he had offered Peyton a scholarship at Butler Mm -hmm. Um, and then Danny Ainge is from Oregon. And so we had known that he was watching Peyton over the years, but we didn't know the interest level. You know, Danny, I yeah. think he's such a smart man and, and he's really methodical, but from what I've heard from other people, he holds his cards pretty tight and really didn't like say who, it, you know, I'm sure there's strategy to each thing that they do, but we just really had no idea, but we did, we knew of Brad and, and Danny and the team, you know, because we yeah. just, because of the Oregon connection and Peyton's recruiting in college. So now walk us through the excitement of his rookie season. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, rookie season, it just, the fact that Peyton's got to play fairly quickly um, mm -hmm. we didn't know if he was, I mean, you just don't know what to expect, you know, exactly. Peyton going into his, the first games had more injuries than he's ever had in his entire life. I should knock on wood. 
right now, but I mean, I think he uh, t- broke his finger. He like somebody like they collide. Like it was like one day after another, he was like getting so beat up and, and he's like, I've never gotten so many injuries. And so we're like, Oh my gosh, you know, are you going to be able to play? And so, um, but yeah, he got into the rotation. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, you know, he had a really good, um, I guess like, I don't, not preseason, but the, the training prior, um, you know, and I, I really attribute that part to him staying four years in college. And, um, so he was prepared. He was a prepared mentally, physically, um, his IQ I think was there. So I think he, I don't want to say he impressed them, but I think he earned their trust, um, in, in terms of like giving a rookie a shot to get out there. And, um, you know, he made the most of every moment. Um, but we were so excited. We were like, Oh my God, he's actually playing. Like, you know, cause you just don't know what to expect. Mm-hmm. Each level is different. And so, absolutely. I mean, here it's like saying he was thrown into the fire, you know, because here he's learning from, you know, I mean, all-star guards like Kemba Walker. Right. So now being in the rotation, and actually playing and earning his minutes as a Celtic player, which you look at rookies and sometimes they get two, three minutes for the first year or two. And here Peyton is like earning his minutes and he's actually on the court and he's playing. Yeah. So, yeah. So good for him. So what is it like for you in your home to watch a Celtic game? Oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> you know, so funny thing is, is like ever since Peyton's played, Terry and I generally don't sit by each other. We have to at the Celtics <laughs> games because the, you don't have choices. Yeah, but yeah. at Oregon, we would usually have like Terry would be on one end and then my parents and then me. And it's more so because like we're both highly competitive and also stressed. <laughs> and so, you know, like we we cheer loudly, but you know, like I, Terry's body moves a lot. Like he's like, I, I swear he's doing basketball for Peyton. And so, you know, but, um, it's just one of those things where it's so exciting, like to be able to see your kid in the NBA, mm. um, for us, um, you know, like I'm not, I I'm always the one. So like Terry has this thing. He doesn't watch paint and shoot free throws. He still doesn't watch paint and shoot free throws. <laughs> and I'm, my job is to say like, Hey, good job. That way Terry knows that it went through the hoop, you know, like, I mean, we've been doing this for like 18 years now or something where we, he doesn't watch him shoot it. And so it's just one of those. And if I don't say like, say if I get sidetracked, because you didn't say good job, did it not go in? And I'm like, it goes in majority of the time, you know? So I'm like, it's just those things that, Um, you know, it's pretty funny, but, um, yeah, we enjoy it. It's a thrill. Like any game that we get to watch of any of our kids play, um, is a blessing. And, you know, the fact that he's playing for the Celtics in the NBA is just like, it is a little surreal. Yeah. Did you get to see him score his first NBA points against the Milwaukee Bucks, which is actually a three pointer? Yeah. I did. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we were, we actually, Terry and I were in the apartment in Boston because we couldn't travel. Yeah. So, you know, we were sitting on the couch, um, and just watching and we were just jumping up and down. We're like, Holy cow. Yay. <laughs> you can actually do this, you know, cause you just don't know, like, you know, Absolutely. you're, you're, you're hoping that, you, you know, each year, each challenge, it's different and you just hope they rise to it. And, and, mm-hmm. you know, and there's just such a, um, a size difference. It's not like mm-hmm. he hasn't played against really, I mean, Bull Bull was on his team at Oregon, but mm-hmm. you know, it, these are like mature, tall men that are very strong. And, you know, like you're just hoping, you know, that your kid is going to rise to the occasion because pain six two, <laughs> he's not, you know, he's, he's not huge. And so, you know, and I will say Peyton is one of those kids that even when he was like seven, eight, nine, he'd play with the men and he never really saw himself as smaller or younger or not able. Um, and that might be, you know, one of his like superpowers is that he just believes he can do it. And so, you know, but it is funny. Like I remember when he played against the Nets and, um, I, I felt like Peyton went up to Katie's waist. Like it was when I saw a picture, I was <laughs> like, Oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, it was, and then Peyton was like, he's amazing. You know, like I still, you know, him growing up watching these players and then playing with them is, you know, it's just, it's exciting. And he's excited to be able to, you know, have that challenge. 
So basketball fans know players through watching games from the time they follow their pl- favorite players, whether it be from high school through NCAA, NBA, and so forth, social media, whatever. But they don't know their favorite players the way we do as moms. So please share with us who is Peyton Pritchard from your perspective. You know, I mean, from my perspective, Peyton is um, a very gifted competitor. He's and um, and also somebody who has a really kind heart. So uh, Peyton's, I think Peyton's, I think most people know this, especially through social media, that Peyton is a grinder. He's one of those ones that probably will outwork most people. Um, but I think the things that they don't know is that, you know, um, Peyton's very much a family. He's a, he's a family kid. He wants to be at home. He likes watching movies. He likes playing games with the family. Um, he likes traveling, but he has a really kind soul and, um, you know, he's just a very nurturing person. Um, and he's a silent leader. So he never really, he's not one to talk a lot to get other people to do things. Mm -hmm. I think he has a unique ability to get people on board by his action. Um, and I, I really think that's a, a gift, you know, and he just has a lot of joy for what he does and a lot of confidence, which, um, I hope he never loses. (laughs) (laughs) I love that answer. NBA teams have defined roles for their players and have certain expectations, but so do we from our sons and daughters, whether they are pro athletes or celebrities or whatever. As mom, what are some expectations that you have from Peyton, your son, and not Peyton, the basketball player? You know, I think for Peyton, my son is to live each day, you know, it to the best of his ability, yes. you know, cause we're going to have good days and we're going to have bad days, but always put in the work and, you know, to be honest with yourself, but, um, also, you know, to help others, to lift them up. Um, and, you know, because you never know when you're going to make an impact on somebody mm-hmm. or when somebody's going to make an impact on you. And so for, for me, you know, is, you know, at, since they were really young, all the kids, I wanted them to be there for each other. But I also want them to have be able to be extremely honest with where they stand and if they've done everything they can. And yeah. I really believe if they have done all of the things that are in their power, their dreams will come true and maybe not in the exact route that they want or the path, but it will happen. And so, you know, those are the things that I, I really just wanted all of them to be able to set a goal and, and, and really drive towards that and, and do all the things that they could to make that happen. For sure. So due to COVID, um, Payton played in the NBA summer league after his rookie season. So how did he adjust to being drafted then going right into the regular NBA season, as opposed to playing in the summer league, which usually aroused allows uh, rookies the opportunity to get their feet wet and experience what is to come in the NBA. Yeah, I mean, it was really a whirlwind because so he was drafted and they flew out, I think the next morning, Mm -hmm. I think he flew out to Boston the next morning. um, And then um, I feel like he may have come back for two days and then went back out there and it was like full blown, um, you know, get ready for the season, basically. Yeah. Um, and so, um, you know, I, this is, this is my first experience with the NBA summer league. So I didn't know what to expect prior, mm-hmm. you know, like what that would have been. I'm sure it would have been a nice stepping stone in terms of like, you know, what to expect, what offense they're running, like different things. Cause you definitely, you had a short amount of time to get up to speed before the season started. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I tribute that Peyton was able to do that more. I don't want to say more successfully than others, but successfully for himself because he had played four years of college and he was just really prepared. So, you know, he could pick that up and, you know, there were things like Kemba was, he was, I think he wasn't playing at first. And, um, so he, 
Kimba was an amazing leader for Peyton um, in terms of just kind of guiding him through what to expect, different challenges. Um, I think there was um, another player that was there too that got traded to the Bucks. Um, that was a guard that also um, was kind of a more senior player that really kind of prepared Peyton mm-hmm. for um, not the ups and downs, but just kind of what to expect when you get out there and, and how to make the most of each moment. And, you know, they were just really, really, you know, they have a good foundation there with the Celtics, the people, the players that they select, which I'm sure it's probably on every team. I only can speak for the Celtics, but I felt like Payne had really good leadership to guide him through this. Um, So, yeah. Did you get a chance to go to the summer league last week? Yes, I did. I went to um, a few of the games. So originally, I mm-hmm. think Peyton was only going to play in a couple games. Um, and then he ended up playing. So we booked our tickets to watch um, the first, I feel like, two games. And then mm-hmm. we flew. Why well, I had to fly to Seattle for work. And um, my husband flew back to Florida. Right. But, um, you know, because uh, to be honest, I don't think any time that there's been a game that Terry's been able to attend, um, I don't think he's missed any. He he only missed Washington State in all of Peyton's college career, of all of his games. And I don't think he missed anything as a youth. And USA basketball, obviously, we didn't go to Egypt, but you know, so Terry's been to everything. So we did go to summer league, and um, you know, that was super fun. Um, you know, it was just nice to see um, one Peyton played a ton, which you know he got to play a lot as a rookie for the Celtics. But here mm-hmm. it's a different role, so you get to kind of try new things. It's a I don't want to say a safe environment, but it is a safe environment to like maybe do things that you wouldn't necessarily do or try in a regular season because you definitely have a role on an NBA team and trying to expand on that role and earn trust and then showing that you can do other things. I think that's what summer league's about. And, you know, I really think Peyton maximized that. Um, and it was, it was fun to watch. Yeah. I watched, I was there and I watched one of your games and I was like, who is this player? And it's just amazing because I know some moms on your team. So, um, but as you're watching the new kids come aboard, you're looking at the rookies and you're like, wow, like this team is going to be fierce. So I, I think I seen two of your games because I believe Peyton played in three, but I seen, yeah, I seen two of your games because then I had to run over to Raptors and all that good stuff. But I was running from gym to gym, but the summer league experience um, that was my first, although my son's been in the league for a while. Um, so it was completely different for me. Um, and when you compare it to a national NBA game, you know what I mean? You just look at the difference and like there is a difference because you can see that yeah. learning curve. But at the same yeah. time, it's fantastic. Like the fans are losing their minds. The parents are just like, you know what I mean? And this for me, this summer league, it was what I loved about it is that you saw vet players that were actually attended where sometimes they just don't. So they attended just to support the team just because, you know, there's so much COVID and everything was just, you know what I mean? Just all over the place last season, which is so different where they were there and they were just cheering on their teams. And I thought it was fantastic. So I'm glad that you went to summer league because that's such a good experience for every parent to, uh, to actually, you know what I mean? To, to go through with their kids. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. I enjoyed it. Um, and I love that. I mean, it reminded me of like, um, the Nike UIBL when you're playing and you get to go from gym to gym, you know? Um, so it's just to get to see a lot of basketball, which, you know, uh, I, we love it. So it's, I like to follow the different kids that, you know, Mm -hmm. we've seen either that played at Oregon and, or, you know, from club basketball and things like that. So it, it was fun. And, and you're right. It isn't necessarily the same level as the NBA because it's just a, they're younger and they're Mm -hmm. less experienced. Um, but you get to see like the future, like what's coming up. And, and, um, so that was really fun. And I think, you know, I, I, I enjoyed watching who the Celtics picked and like what's coming up there. Like, yeah. you know, that was exciting. And yeah. so, you know, I, it was, I, I'm glad we did it for sure. And it's awesome to see, and I can imagine for you to see your son playing, although he's a rookie, he's playing like, I guess a lead role to the new rookies now. 
So you have right. like rookies from last year who never played summer league and you have the rookies that just got drafted and they're just mushed together. And here Peyton's like, no, I was there before you. So I'm a leader now. Like I can show you the ropes because I know I played some games, which is good because he's still a rookie. So it's amazing. So, <laughs> so <laughs> before we get into the fun facts, just tell me, what is it like being the courtside mom of Peyton Pritchard? You know, I mean, it's... um I don't even know if there is a word proud. I think that that would be, um, you know, what I, when I see him playing in the NBA, I, I I just beam with pride and I'm just over the moon thankful. Um, and so, you know, I don't really see it as like fame or anything because he's still just my son and, you know, and so like for me, it's like, I just, love seeing him accomplish and chase his dream and that we get to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so I, I think it's just, I, I think the one word I would say if I was to describe it would be, um, or maybe two proud and thankful. Yeah. This question just popped into my head. You said you had, uh, two other kids that are playing, um, college ball is there anything from Peyton's journey that you would change so that they don't have to endure that? If that makes sense. <laughs> well, so it's funny that you asked me that. So, you know, raising kids that are so close in age and having Peyton be the star, basically, he's, they're, they're all amazing. And, you know, Anthony, we um, became legal guardians in seventh grade, but he played with us since second grade. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's an amazing shooter, like literally, um, and he's also, I would say the cohesive one in our relation, in our group of the younger ones, because he's the one, you know, Peyton and Lexi being siblings, you know, he'll poke at her and stuff. And Anthony's the one that just would always, you know, if Lexi's having a bad day or whatever, you're beautiful or you're amazing, or, you know, he's just that that kid. Um, and so when we adopted or became legal guardians of Anthony, um, he would be, had been playing on our club teams and he actually went to New Mexico first and he was there um, for four years and then got um, a waiver from the NCAA to go um, and be a transfer. And so he played his fifth year at the University of Oregon, which was such a blessing because the fact that those two played high school basketball together. So Anthony won three state titles with Peyton. Um, and he also played on our club team and, um, you know, if you were ever to look up, I mean, Anthony can shoot lights out. He's just a pure shooter. Um, and so, um, it's just amazing, you know, and he's had his own success in his own right. He played over in Greece. Then he got picked up with the Spurs. Um, he broke his thumb or he would have been in, um, I think he broke his thumb like the Spurs played somewhere before they went to Vegas. I think mm-hmm. it was in Utah or somewhere. And I think he broke his thumb in one of the games. So he's out for a bit, but I think he'll play in the G League with the Spurs. Um, so we're really excited to see that journey. Um, and then Lexi, she is also a guard at Santa Clara and she loves basketball, but basketball for Lexi was to get an education and to make the most of it. But it's she never, she doesn't want to play in the WNBA. It's, um, you know, she was very selective on the school. She wanted to go to a school that had a great education. She wanted to be in California. Um, and, you know, she wanted to play in a conference where she could contribute. And, you know, and that there are different levels within, you know, college basketball where there are different expectations. I'm not saying that everybody's driving towards the tournament, but, you know, for her, it was a different. So I think for Lexi, the hard part of having Peyton be so successful is that's all everybody wants to talk about. So for her, they're like, you know, she, she's actually a phenomenal defender. She's, her offense isn't like Peyton. She's just like, it's different. So they're like, why don't you do that? Like your brother? And she's like, well, I'm not my brother. And they're like, well, maybe you should watch, you know, his stuff. And she's, you know, so for her, you know, she wrote an amazing paper last year that kind of, it showed that she had matured so much in being thankful for the journey that she gets to be his, right. you know, sister, but that she's her own person. Right. And, you know, so we love them all like uniquely because they're all special and they're all highly successful. And, and, but it is that, you know, it, there were times where I felt like, gosh, you know, can we talk about something else besides Peyton? <laughs> you know, <laughs> but you know, and then, and I say that 
you know, like I love talking about pain, but I also sometimes would like the other two are sitting there and you're like, so what did we do at school today? You know, kind of thing. But, you know, I think they're all super close. Um, they met up for Lexi's 21st birthday and, you know, they, they do all the things together. So the kids have come to understand that they're all unique and that, you know, we're proud of all of them and that, you know, they love being a part of Peyton's journey and are super proud of him as well. Um, but you know, when you've got three competitive kids, who doesn't want to be the, the, the star or the, the main attraction or whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah. you know, so trying to find that balance for them and have them embrace their uniqueness and their, um, their gifts, you yeah. know, and, and to let them know, you know, that the sky's the limit for each and every one of them. Absolutely. I thank you so, so much, Melissa, for spending some time with me and teaching us all about Peyton, your family, yourself. Uh, we've learned so much and I really appreciate you. And I cannot wait until we get to meet in person. It's too bad we didn't meet last week at the uh, at the Summer League, but that's OK because things are I opening know. now. So <laughs> for sure, I can't wait. And I'm going to be looking for you at that game. So we'll have oh. to like message each other so we can come say hello <laughs> i will definitely call you um when i get to um because i'll be moving not that far um yeah from boston so i will be coming to see um games raptors and celtics games so i'll let you know when i'm there <laughs> we can sit and watch the game together so for sure i look forward to it <laughs> so thank you so much for coming on courtside thank you thank you for tuning in guys don't forget to follow us on social media at Courtside Moms and make sure you subscribe to the podcast.